Hi and welcome. Well, today we're going to be talking about communication systems, okay? Now, we have to think that communication systems are things that we use all the time but we tend to think that it's just that computer or that device that we have right in front of us. But in reality, they are more and more things and there are many things that happen within our site. You know, some, some of them happen when we're looking, but a lot of them, most of them happen and we don't see them. So today we're gonna to be talking about communication systems and I will go over the parts of those systems so that you have a better understanding of what's going on once a message or whatever it is that you're sending leaves your computer. Let's get started. So we will begin by talking about communication systems and we're gonna look at the different things about them. For example, we'll begin by talking about the definition and a communication system is a system that actually is gonna transmit data from one place to another. Okay, so meaning from your computer to a server and then whatever the server has to tell you comes right back to your computer. Now, these kind of systems may be wired or wireless. The idea is that many years ago, there was only, well, many years, like 15, 20 years ago, you know, uh, everything was wired. Now most things are wireless. And as we move on, even more and more things are, are wireless. And Actually, it's very, very specific things that are still wired. We still, though, get a lot more uh, speed when we're talking wired as opposed to wireless. But in order to get into all those details, you will have to actually learn a little bit more about networking. And for that, I invite you to take ICS 184. But in any case, for now, we're going to look at how information is transmitted from one place to another via wire or wireless media. Okay, let's continue. So we have uh, some basic elements of a communication system. To begin with, we have the sending and receiving devices. Those are the ones that we usually see, as I was mentioning. Then we have connection devices, and we also have a communication channel. I would like to tell you a little bit about your sending and receiving devices. They need to do things in a certain way when they are connected to the internet, you know, because otherwise, everybody will do things their own way and there will be no communication. It's like you and me, we're speaking English right now, you're understanding hopefully what I'm saying, but if we have each one of us our own language, then you will not be able to understand and I will not be able to talk to you either, right? So sending and receiving devices need to have a certain way to speak to each other, right? Then we have the connection devices, which are in the middle, and those devices also help, it's, it's like relays in the middle that help pass the information from sender to receiver, and you have a certain number of connection devices in the middle, and they just hop from one to the next until they arrive to the end. And we have the communication channel in itself, which is uh, uh, the, you know, the fact that you can send something is the, the media. Okay, let's continue. So in speaking of the com communication channel, as I said, it is the media, we have that it can be wired or it can be wireless. As I mentioned before then, so we can, the wires we can see, the wireless we cannot see. So aside from this then, we think about a communication system and it's gonna look something like this. Now, you see we have a computer on each end, and then we have some communication devices and a communication channel. Needless to say, guys, that this is overly simplified. To begin with, the two end devices are computers. I'm not specifying what kind of computer it is. In one side, I wanna think that you have your computer or laptop, or maybe a Chromebook or maybe a tablet, right? So it doesn't have to be a computer computer, it can be any other device, including a cellular phone. <clears throat> On the other end, I said computer, but most likely it's gonna be a server of one, of one kind or another, right? But you will have that computer on the other side. We then have communication devices. Those are the ones that actually help one message go all the way to the, to the receiving end and know which path to follow. It is hard to figure it out, but that's why the internet is such a great achievement because it is kind of hard 
to tell a message how to find a particular place to go. You know, if they want to go uh, to computer A, that they will not end in computer B. You know, it's not that, I, I think that we got used to seeing that the internet always works well. For example, I don't think it's often that you will get an email to address to a different email address actually in your mailbox. You know, you usually get email spam if you want, but it's, it's, it's mailed to you because it was sent in a way that they are sure that you're gonna get it. So all of those things are very important parts of communication systems that help tie the internet together. Okay, let's continue. So how do we send all that information? Well, we send the information using signals. And we have an analog signal. So let's talk about that. What is analog, you know? Well, analog, if you wanna uh, have an oversimplified version of this, analog means that it's not digital. If you were listening to my voice right here in the studio, you will be listening in an analog way, okay? Analog is not just on and off, or yes or no, or zero or one, but it's a continuum of values, okay? Like moving your voice, you know, different pitch, going up, going down, the different volumes. That will be an analog signal. Humans were analog. Okay, so whenever we want to use something, you know, we want to transmit something in a digital way using, uh, you know, via digital information, for example, using the computer to send to another computer, we need to transform that, that signal from being analog to being digital. Let's take a look at how the digital signal actually looks. This is the digital signal. It looks too square, right? So what happens here is that the signals get transformed. In here in the picture, it's an oversimplification because we see that the analog curve moves like this, right? Something like nice and curvy. If we wanted to do that in, in a digital way, instead of having like squares like that, we will have a bunch of little squares, many different signals, you know, at different levels in order to try to mimic as close as possible with a bunch of little rectangles, you know, that curve, that analog curve. So there is a lot of um, ways to, you know, the algorithms to actually modify an analog signal into a digital signal so that it can be transmitted, okay? So when we transmit something, What's the deal with that? Let's take a look. If we're transmitting something, we transmit it at a certain speed, and that will be our transfer rate. Okay, so how much can I send? Many years ago, I still remember, we could measure that in kilobits per second. Then it got fast, and we were able to send megabits per second. However, nowadays, it got even faster, and we can actually get gigabits per second. Now, there is one thing that you have to consider. In here, take a look, we have modems. And in order for me to send information, remember the analog and digital part? Well, to get a good transfer rate, I need to have a good modulator or demodulator, which we actually call a modem. That's where it comes from. In regards to modulation, okay, is when we grab the signal and we convert it from digital to analog. Okay, and then we have the demodulation, which converts the signal from analog to digital. So it goes back and forth. Every single modem should actually do both things. You know, it's gonna convert something analog, like your voice, let's say you're speaking on the phone or Skype per se. So it's gonna, it's gonna convert that voice and it's gonna pass it from analog to digital and digitally is how it's gonna travel all the way to the other computer. You see, now on the other side, the modulation will go the other way around. You know, it's gonna grab something digital and it's gonna, I mean, the modulation was gonna get something digital and it's gonna make it into analog so that you can listen to it, okay? So every modem is gonna actually do, you know, all these kind of, um, all this functionality, okay? Let's continue. So what types of modems can you find out there? Well. First, I'm gonna start with the oldest one. That's a telephone modem. I am gonna guess that probably you have never seen one of these. Uh, it's, you guys are probably too young for that, but so we're gonna to skip to the next one, you know? You don't need to connect via the phone anymore. Now we have DSL. And DSL stands for Digital Subscribers Line. 
and we have one kind of DSL that is the one that is used the most, and this is called the asymmetric DSL. So why is it asym asymmetric? Asymmetric, I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, whenever you are at your computer and you're accessing the internet, what you do is that you, um, you type something, right? And you, every single time you type one sentence, namely a URL, and what you get back is a bunch of stuff. You get all the web page, all the, the pictures, the sounds, whatever is in that website, right? So every time you put a little bit of information, like a click, a mouse click, a, you know, your name, whatever, username, password, and then you get a lot of information. So what they do is that if you have a channel this wide, what they do is that they give all of this part of the channel, like big chunk of the channel for you to receive information and a very narrow channel for you to send requests because what you send is so tiny and is so little but what you receive is so much that it will not make sense to have symmetrical DSL. You know, you will have a lot of more demand for stuff that you want to download and very little for the stuff that you want to upload. Okay, so asymmetric is the best way to go so you can download a lot of stuff. And that will explain why when you're downloading something, it's really fast. But when you wanna upload something on the internet, it takes a long, long time. Like when you are submitting your assignments to Lao Lima, it will take much longer than for me to download them. Let's continue. Well, aside, we have other modems like the cable modem and we have wireless modems. All of these modems, you know, cable modems, wireless modems, DSL, they all help you modulate whatever it is that you have in here and send it into the digital world in a digital format, okay? The only thing I have to tell you is enjoy your modems. See you around.